Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the particle zoo, which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how we can describe and define the properties of the particle zoo. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the different types of particles in the particle zoo, list the properties of basic particles in the particle zoo, and determine the type of particle from its properties, which falls into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification. So, if so far in your studies you've encountered three different subatomic particles, the proton, the electron and the neutron. Now this is what makes up atoms which makes up all, which make you up in all of the matter that you find on Earth. Now this was finally uh, solved and finally finalised in 1932 when James Chadwick discovered the neutron existed inside the atom. And this led to the understanding of the time that all particles in the universe were the proton, the neutron and the electron, which is what you learned at GCSE Physics. Now. We refer to the classifications of particles as the particle zoo. Now, from our previous work, we know that these particles can be differentiated via their rest mass, their rest energy, their charge, and their specific charge. But in 1936, Carl Anderson experimentally found out antimatter, which was postulated by Paul Dirac. Now, this led to the idea of antiparticles. So, the number of particles understood to exist doubled. So, as well as having the proton, neutron, and electron, you had the antiproton anti-neutron and the positron. So you had both particle matter and antiparticle matter. Now remember, particles and antiparticles have the same rest mass and the same rest energy, but particles and antiparticles have opposite properties for everything else. Now if these were the only subatomic particles to exist in the universe, our particle zoo would be very small and particle physics would be very simple. And we thought this was the case until around 1963. This is until physicists started to analyse the contents of cosmic rays which have been recently detected in the upper atmosphere of the earth so basically what happened was we could analyze cosmic rays rays coming from space and hitting the earth's atmosphere because it was realized that they do not just contain the particles of that are found on earth the proton the neutron and the electron because when these cosmic rays were analyzed they were found to contain lots of different particles which we called exotic particles now these exotic particles have a much higher mass than the proton, neutron and electron. This meant that they must have had a high rest energy and were produced in high energy events, such as those found in stars. So the cosmic rays were, were entering the Earth's atmosphere and bringing with it the exotic particles. Now over time, these exotic particles decay into smaller particles, but the total overall energy and mass doesn't change. This means that the mass of exotic particles turn into many smaller, less massive particles. So, it was an important idea to know that the particles that we already knew about, or the, which were the common particles on Earth, are the common particles because they're the smallest stable possible particles to be made in the universe. So, physicists soon realised that our previous understanding of particles in the universe was a large oversimplification because over time, entropy had meant energy and spread out and produced these smaller particles more easily. So, in the universe, the smaller particles are the more more common ones. However, in the universe, especially under high energy events such as supernovae, there are many larger particles possible than the smaller, stable, less massive particles found on Earth. So at the Large Hadron Collider, we actually uh, uh, simulate these high energy events and produce these larger particles to observe them. So in reality, physicists realised that there were many, many, many different particles and antiparticles possible in the universe. So like a zoo of animals, there was a zoo of particles. Now we needed to bring order to the particles okay, by putting them into different groups or families according to their properties. We needed to have a classification to our particle zoo. Now we did this by placing the particles into different families based on things which we call lepton number and baryon number. So we ordered all of the particles into a particle zoo. Now just to clarify, there's also an antiparticle zoo which consists of 
antiparticles, but in this lesson we're only going to consider the particle zoo. Now the first way to order matter was to place it into one of two categories. Fundamental matter or fundamental particles and non-fundamental matter or fundamental particles, which we term hadrons. Now fundamental particles cannot be broken down any further. So this means our fundamental particles are stable, but our hadrons are not fundamental. They can be broken down further. They are particles made from quarks. So as a result, they can be unstable and decay into other particles. So all non-fundamental matter, all hadrons, have a structure inside of it. Now all non-fundamental particles are unstable apart from a few select examples. So that's important ideas to note. Now the proton is an example of a stable hadron and the pion is an example of a stable hadron. Now we can use this idea of the fundamental particles and the hadrons to further subdivide these two categories into smaller groups. So in the fundamental particles, you can separate them into two main categories. Leptons, which just tend to be fundamental particles, such as the electron or a neutrino, and exchange particles, which are fundamental particles that are force carriers. So they include photons and gravitons. Now your hadrons can be separated into two families of their own. Mesons, which is when it, the hadron is made from two quarks, one quark and one antiquark. So examples include the pion and the chaos and the baryon, which is made of three quarks, such as the proton or the neutron. Now, all fundamental particles are stable and don't wish to decay, but hadrons are not stable and can decay further. Now, the only baryon that does not decay is the proton, as it's stable since it has the lowest baryonic mass. Now, only hadrons are subject to an interaction on the particle level called the strong interaction. So, leptons are not affected by our strong interaction. Interaction. Now, the fundamental particles are organized according to their properties, okay, and the non-fundamental particles are organized according to their properties, which is caused by their quark structure. So here's another view of our particle zoo, where we've got our ideas of our elementary particles, okay, and we've got our hadrons, which link into our mesons and baryons, but we've also got our elementary particles, our fundamental particles, which are leptons and our exchange particles. Now, the greatest breakthrough to bring bringing order and classification to the particle zoo was the discovery that hadrons, baryons and mesons were not fundamental. They could be broken down into something smaller. So hadrons are found to be made from quarks. Now quarks are thought, thought to be smaller pieces of matter and they are thought to be fundamental at the minute. But that may change based on our further breakthroughs in particle physics. So Baryons are made from three quarks, so the proton is made from three quarks, and our mesons are made from two quarks, one quark, one antiquark. Now, fundamentally, quarks can either exist as pairs, such as a meson, or in triplets, a baryon, but they can't exist separately. Fundamentally, quarks can exist as in pairs or triplets, they can't exist separately. Single quarks have never been observed in the universe. So originally, the particle zoo was ordered due to particle properties but we now realize that these different properties are caused by different quark compositions. So quarks come in six flavors. Now each flavor has a complementary pair because they tend to exist with each other. And there are also six antiquarks. Now the laws of quantum physics state it is impossible for a quark to exist by itself. So you have the up quark and the down quark, the top quark and the bottom quark, the charm quark and the strange quark. Now quarks were postulated by Mary Gell Mann in 1969 and he won a Nobel Prize on this. Now, the discovery of the quark brought order and understanding to the particle zoo. Now, much like how you can differentiate between different animals in a zoo with the different characteristics they have, you can do the same with particles. Now, the main defining characteristics of particles are the rest mass energy, the charge, the lepton number, and the baryon number. Now, the lepton number and baryon number are abstract quantities given to explain the properties of particles. They're not fundamental concepts, rather a way for humans to understand quark behavior. Now, now we realize that baryon number and quark numbers are caused by the quark properties, so we call them 
quantum numbers. Now this allows you to group the particles into the different families mentioned previously because baryons all have similar properties as each other, mesons all have similar properties as each other and leptons all have similar properties as each other. So if you look at the rest mass, energy, the charge, the lepton number and the baryon number that allows you to group your different particles into different families. So the first particle is the family is the lepton. Now there are three types of lepton, electrons, tau and muons. Now each lepton has an accompanying uh, neutrino particle which has no charge. Now leptons have a lepton number of either plus one or minus one. So each lepton has a lepton number of plus one, each anti-lepton has a lepton number of minus one. But all leptons and anti-leptons have a baryon number of zero. Now it's important to know that fundamentally the only difference between different leptons are their rest energies. So electrons are the most common leptons as they have the smallest rest energy. Taus are the least common leptons as they have the largest rest energy. So the muon is a particle that decays into an electron. The tau is a particle that can decay into an electron and they both do this by shedding excess mass as energy. Now hadrons come in two types, baryons and mesons. Now they're both made from quarks, a baryon, three quarks, an antibaryon, three antiquarks, a meson, one quark, one antiquark. So an antimeson is just a meson because it would also be one quark, one antiquark. Now hadrons are much larger than leptons. They're all unstable except for protons because all baryons eventually decay into a proton. Now only baryons can have a non-zero baryon number. So baryons have a baryon number of 1, antibaryons minus 1, mesons have a baryon number of 0, and all hadrons have a lepton number of 0. So baryons and mesons then can decay as they're made from quarks. So when hadrons decay, the quarks change type. So hadrons wish to decay into smaller hadrons, so the proton cannot decay as it's the smallest hadron because it's made from the smallest stable configuration of quarks. Now as a meson is a quark, the ant is a quark and Antiquark pair, anti mesons do not exist because the anti meson will just be the quark and anti quark swapping around, so the meson has its own anti meson. Now we call a meson which has a non zero value of strangeness a kaon. Now kaons are always produced in pairs and kaons can decay into pions. Now the final family are the exchange particles or the bosons. Now these particles carry all of the forces in the universe. The range of any force or interaction depends on the range of the boson and the mechanism of the force is directly related to the properties of the boson or its exchange particle. Okay, so bosons have a zero lepton number and a zero baryon number. So we can summarize our particle zoo properly with the following tables. Leptons have a lepton number of one and a baryon number of zero. Antileptons minus one lepton, baryon number zero. Baryons have a lepton number of zero and a baryon number of one. Antibaryons have a lepton number of zero but a baryon number of minus one. In mesons, because they're neither a lepton or a baryon, have a lepton number and baryon number of zero each. And bosons are the same because they're not a lepton or a baryon they have a lepton number and baryon number each of a zero now it's expected you should recognize the family a particle belongs to from its baryon number and lepton number now to differentiate between mesons and bosons you've got to learn the names of the different bosons so for a particle decay to occur in the universe the following quantities need to be conserved between particles before a decay and after a decay so the total charge before must equal the total charge after the total momentum before must equal the total momentum after. The total mass energy before must equal the total mass energy after. The total baryon number before must equal the total baryon number after. And the total lepton number before equals the total lepton number after. So for a decay to take place in the universe, all of these quantities have to be conserved in the process. If one is not, then the decay does not happen. So if they're all conserved, the decay happens. So this is why some decays are observed in the universe universe and some decays are not observed in the universe. Now in particle physics understanding the property of each family in the particle zoo is key. This allows you to work out which decays happen in a collider. So as we mentioned before you need all of these properties to be conserved in your particle decay. Now if one of the properties is not conserved we say the decay does not happen as there's been a violation of the property. So for example this decay doesn't happen due to lepton 
number violation. So let's summarise what we've learned in today's lesson. Hadrons are subject to the strong interaction and there are two classes of hadrons, baryons and antibaryons and mesons. Baryon number is a quantum number and baryon number must be conserved in a particle decay. The proton is the only stable baryon into which other baryons eventually decay. The pion is the exchange particle of the strong force and the kaon as a particle can decay into pions. Leptons include the electron, the muon and the neutrino and their antiparticles. Lepton number is a quantum number and you've got to have a conservation of lepton number for all, for different decays. Now the muon as a particle decays into an electron. So if we've been so successful and learnt in today's lesson. We can describe the different types of particles in the particle zoo. We can list the properties of particles in the particle zoo and we can determine the types of particles from its properties. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson where we've looked at the particle zoo in the particle and radiation topic for AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson and have a lovely day.